Okay, so this demonstration is for my typography class in the fall of 2016, one of my favorite classes of people. And we're going to be doing a box template, which um, each of us are going to have a slightly different box. I'm just going to use this funky box here. In the end, it should look like this with these little puckers here. You know, on the one I did in class, we had some puckering and bloating. So I was uh, like, well, I'll just challenge myself a little bit. Um, and this is out of this book called um, The Packaging Designer's Book of Patterns. It's the third edition. There's probably a fourth edition by now. And this is kind of small. But I'm going to bring it into uh, Illustrator and I'm going to use this as, um, you know, just as is. Um, I don't have a, a product. This is just for demonstration. If I did have a product, I might have to adjust some of the measurements here to accommodate that product, uh, the, the size of it. So first things first, I'm going to go into Illustrator. I'm going to create a new document. The largest page size we can print on is 12 by 18. So let's do this. Let's maximize the printable area here. Um, I don't know what sizes you guys need yet. Some folks have packaging small enough that this might fit on an 8.5 by 11. But in this case, let's say I want to make this a little bit bigger. Uh, so I'm going to type in, let's see, it's a 12 by 18 page, but we can't print edge to edge. It takes about a quarter of an inch off. So 12 minus 2 quarters minus a half is 11.5 inches wide. And make sure I put an I in. Right now, Illustrator's in points. Uh, if you wanted to change your units, uh, this is the cool thing. InDesign doesn't have this. But if you wanted to go and change your units from points to inches right here, you can. And you don't. then you don't have to worry about typing an I in. So let's do 11.5 which is now inches. And our height, because we have 18 inches worth of paper available, we need to minus the white area that it misses on the outside, so that's about a half inch total. So we've got 17.5 total inches available. Okay. Now you may end up having yours uh, become a little bit smaller. Um, it just depends on your product. Okay. So I'm going to hit Command-0 and then Command-minus. Uh, Command-0 pretty much tries to put the whole image into your screen at one time. I think our resolution is set a little low here, so I'm going to hit Command-minus just a smidge. If I hold down the space bar, it turns into the hand tool and I can move things around. Command-minus zooms out. And again, space bar gives you the hand tool so you can move some stuff around. I'm going to hide a few things here that I don't need yet. Uh, let's put Pathfinder down here. It's a fabulous little tool. Okay, um, the first thing I typically will do uh, before I even position my template uh, that I've, you know, created, and for you guys, because you're, you're doing things by hand, you might scan this in or photograph it and bring it in, because uh, many of you have created these little paper dummies, um, and those are great to start with and bring into Illustrator and make them absolutely perfect. So um, before I can make it perfect, I need to set my unit of measurement and I need to set some, um, basically some grids and guides. So let's go to view and we'll go to guides and we'll say, or I'm sorry, we'll go down to um, uh, show grid. We want to see the grid. Now typically I will zoom into the upper left corner because I want to see how many subdivisions there are. I've zoomed way, way, way in. I'm like over 500% zoomed in. This uh, grid appears as if the major uh, divisions are every one inch. You'll see a darker line. And then that one inch is subdivided eight ways. So each square here, there's eight of them in an inch. Each of these is one eighth of an inch. Now sometimes when I'm doing packaging, um, the measurements can go as tight as 1 62nd or 1 64th of an inch or 1 32nd of an inch. Uh, sometimes they're that tight. So let's assume they are. How do I get the one inch grid uh, divided into 60, um, 64th or 30 seconds, 1 32nd of an inch? I'll, I'll start with 1 32nd. If I have to change to 64th, then I'll go do that. Now, if you're in a Mac, you would go to um, the Illustrator CC uh, word up here in the um, left corner. You would go to Preferences, and you would go down to Guides and Grids. If you're on a PC, you would go to Edit, and at the bottom of the Edit menu, it will have uh, Preferences down there. Now, I'm on a Mac. 
but it would be down here where my mouse is on a PC. It'd be under Edit, and then Preferences are down here. But for a Mac, it's under Illustrator, Preferences, it's the second item down, and Guides and Grid. Okay. Now, um, right now it is a grid line every one inch, which is fine. And subdivisions are eight. Now, let's say I needed at least uh, to work in one thirty seconds of an inch. That's very a very fine measurement. If I type in 32 and hit OK, you will now see that each of these uh, grid lines has been subdivided in 32 ways. Let me change the color of this grid so you can see it a little bit better. Again, I can go to Illustrator CC, the Preferences, go to Grids and Guides, and I can change my grid lines to a completely different color and you will see them better. See, I made them orange. Light gray is nice while you're working but on the overhead in the classroom you can't see it very well so I've just made them orange so you can see them a little bit better. Now when I zoom out, I'm going to hit command minus, be control minus on a PC. I still have them as 30 seconds of an inch but the more I zoom out it might get tighter and tighter, but there will be a point where it will stop and it will make them like a sixteenth of an inch. Now there's only sixteen of them. If it had a grid line every thirty-second of an inch, when I'm zoomed out all the way, it would just be a mess of orange or a mess of grid lines that were so tight that it just looked like a solid color. So you'll see as you zoom out, now it looks like there's eight subdivisions in that uh, inch. They just do that so it's not so bogged down with all these lines. If you zoom in, they're still there. So that's one of the first things I do is I set my grid um, so that it measures uh, around a 32nd of an inch. Sometimes you can go uh, as big as a 16th or even an 8th if your packaging is not too tight. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is let's assume I have a, a, a package I'm working on and I did this paper dummy and maybe it's not math maybe it's mathematically accurate, maybe it's not. But you could photograph your paper dummy. Uh, if you have a paper dummy, I would actually draw lines where the folds are. Um, you can scan it in. That's even better because your scan is flat and a photograph is going to be skewed. So you might scan it in, but I would draw lines on every fold so you can actually see them when you go to scan. Okay, so if you have created a hand package, uh, package by hand, draw lines and put it on the scanner, scan it in. Now, let's assume I, I well, for me, I'm using a template from a book. So I'm going to go to File and I'm going to Place. There it is. File place, about halfway down, this template that I grabbed from this book. There it is. It says box template. I'm going to hit place. Now, let me zoom out just a smidge. Move this around. And when I went to file place, I'll have to do that again because I lost it. I get this small icon of an image, and if I click, it just pops it in there. All right. Now this is going to be too small. Again, I'm I'm kind of just shooting at the hip. I I'm just going to make this as big as my printable area. I do not have a product, therefore I don't know how big to make this package. You guys have a product, so you can actually measure your product and know how to big big to make this package. Um, now I'm going to hold down the Shift key, and I'm going to make this larger by uh, holding down the Shift and then pulling on usually a corner anchor point and dragging this. I don't care about the little picture of the box. All I care about is the actual template. Now, one of the things I have a problem with sometimes, I want to line this up to the grid as much as possible, but the grid lines are behind my scan. Urgh. I don't know if this is lining up or not. There is a way to put the grid lines in front, so I want to do that, and it may be a temporary move, but I can turn it back off to go to the back. So I'm going to go to Illustrator, the Preferences. I'm going to go to Grids and Guides. And where it says Grids in Back, I uncheck that, and it will put the grids in the front. Oh, I can tell where things are lining up. Now, you may want to turn that back on at some point, because it does get a little confusing to look at. Now, again, the name of the game for me is just, uh, in my case, maybe not in yours, but in my case is to maximize the uh, amount of paper that I have here. So I'm increasing this to the point where the flaps that I have to the right and the left are basically at the edge of my document. 
This will print to the edge of this document because this document is not 12 by 18. This one is 11 and a half by 17 and a half. So it'll go, it'll print right to the edge. Actually, I'll just take it down just a little bit. I also prep my, let's see, do I need crop marks? No, I really don't need crop marks because all of my die lines are going to be there. So I'll take it right to the edge. But you don't stretch it. You just do the shift. Yeah, hold down the shift. If you stretch it, everything gets out of proportion. And what will happen is things will not, like the box lid will end up being too short or too long. Um, yeah, all sorts of chaos and mayhem will happen if you guys don't um, hold down the shift key and increase this proportionally. If you just if you just clicked and dragged like this without holding the shift key down, oh, that's a nice skinny box. But these guys will be too long now for this proportion. Okay, so everything needs to stay proportional. I just hit Command Z to undo that. Uh, so you want to hold down the shift key when you are increasing the size of your scan of your uh, little box that you made. Okay, so I'm getting that pretty close. I really want it super close, so I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to drag this to the, the black line is the edge of the page. And I'm going to drag it so that line is real close to that black line. Um, and I can always make adjustments later. And the other one should be really close to touching the other, so I'm, I'm pretty good. I've increased this so that the left and the right, let me turn off these grids for just a second. View, guides, hide guides. I'm sorry, view, that was grid, hide grid. We can see that, let me zoom out and deselect. Um, woo, this black little continuous line here was my 11 and a half by 17 and a half. And we can see that this package goes right edge to edge. Now you guys may, yours may go in a little bit. That's fine. I'm just trying to maximize page size. Now while I'm here, I might want to just go ahead and, and I'm using the arrow key and I am, uh, if I hold down the shift key and use the arrow key, it goes a lot quicker. I'm arrowing this up so that it ends up kind of hugging the edge up here too. Why not? I can adjust my artboard also later to accommodate the fact that this is short. Okay, so I'm just kind of getting this in position. Now once I have that in position, I'm going to turn my guides back on. So that was under view, show grid rather. I keep calling them guides, but this is, this is a view, show grid. I know this is kind of noisy, but I'm going to zoom in. And I would love to admit that I put this in the scanner all perfect and straight, but guys, we do not live in a perfect and straight world. And so guess what? When I scan this in, it is slightly off. How do I know that? I'm looking at this very long dotted line, and it does not follow the grid that well. It's close, but close doesn't count in packaging. It has to be accurate. So I'm going to have to rotate this just a smidge so it kind of follows the grid a little bit better so I don't get confused while I'm working on it. So instead of clicking on it and actually, uh, when you click on a, a, an object and then go out to the edges, you'll get the rotation tool. You could do that, but I like to just double click on the rotation tool itself after clicking on the object. And I like to just type in a rotation. So this will be a really tiny rotation. I believe it's a negative two. Let's try a negative 0.5. Actually, I'll do a negative point. I'll do a negative one and we can preview it. I'm like, oh, okay, that rotated it pretty good. Uh, however, things are slightly off on the alignment, so instead of a negative 0.1, I might have a negative 0.5. Again, I'm going to click off and on the preview. I'm like, well, things are lining up pretty good. I'm looking at the whole picture. Some things are better than others. It might even be a negative 0.4 or a negative 0.6. I don't know. I just need to try it. And so I just get this so that it works out pretty well with the grid. So for me, it was a negative 0.6. So not even a full degree of rotation six-tenths of a rotation to get that to kind of get in there right. And I hit OK. You know, this took a lot of time already to set this up, so I should go to File and Save, or Save As, and I should call this something. Box Template. Probably should save it in my Project 6 folder. An unknown error has occurred. Oh, fabulous! This means it's not going to save. Anybody else come across that problem? If you're, if you're playing with me here? It's happened in my office, and I assumed it was just my uh, illustrator in my office. Same error. same error? Everybody getting the same error? 
Hmm. It doesn't like this PDF. That's what we can conclude there. See if locking that layer will make it. Nope. Mm. All right, guess what? We have just all run into a, the same problem. So here's what we're going to do. Life always gives you a big old lemon, doesn't it? So let's figure out if we can do a lemonade thing here. So here I have my box template PDF that I downloaded from um, Blackboard from that I scanned to myself. I'm going to right click and open with uh, perhaps Photoshop. I'm going to save it as a different format instead of a PDF. Maybe it's having a problem with PDF. So I'm going to save it as a different format completely and then replace it, reposition it, <laughs> and then hopefully uh, it will save it. And I'm not even going to reposition. I'm just going to place it and see if I can save it just to start out with. I don't want to spend all that time finding out I can't save it. Now, Illustrator by history, uh, in, in the history of me using Illustrator for many years, uh, it can be a little glitchy, so we'll just see. Um, let's see, the anti-alias, I typically want that off. I want it pretty sharp. Uh, image size, 8.5 by 11 is what it was. 300 pixels per inch should be fine. And I really don't need it RGB. I can go grayscale because it's just black and white. So I'm going to hit OK. So this is what happens when you try to import a PDF in Photoshop. It asks you, hey, you want this size? You want this resolution? What do you want? So I kept it at 8.5 by 11 at 300 pixels per inch, but I changed the mode from uh, RGB to grayscale. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to flatten the image, assuming it needs to be, but it looks like it's already one layer. I'm going to do it anyway. So I'm going to fly out on layers. Uh, there's a little hash mark. You guys definitely probably all have worked in Photoshop. I'm going to click on that and flatten that image. And then I'm going to save it as, uh, it can be a PSD file or a TIFF file, but I'm just, I'll just leave it a TIFF. It's already there. Save it. Hit OK on this. Don't need to change anything on the TIFF options. And now I'm going to go to Illustrator and see if it's going to give me such a fuss. Let me click on this guy here. Oops, unlock my layer. Before I delete it, I'm going to go to Info. And I'm going to write a few things down because I didn't change the size of this. I'm going to write exactly the X and Y axis. It's width and height. That way, when I get my new one in there, I don't have to guess. I can just tell it exactly what these were because I don't want to have to do that again. So I'm going to jot this down. My X was minus 2.642, my y was minus 1.3018, and my width was, now you know why I'm writing this down. Who can remember all this? Width was that, height was 16 and some, 16.793. Oh, I don't even want to commit that to memory. What's that? Oh, that was under window, and I found info. Window info is that little window. Just brings me up information about the position of that thing. It's width and its height. Very nice. And I can, uh, I'll leave that open just for giggles. Now I'm going to delete this. Yay. I'm going to see if I can save it. File, save as. I'm going to call it box template. If I can't save it, then we know it's, uh, and nothing's in there when we know it's an Illustrator problem. Let's hit save, hit OK. This has nothing on it right now. I do not get the error. So apparently it did have a problem with that PDF. All right? This is real world uh, stuff. You know, I don't plan this stuff, and neither, and, you know, it'll come and bite your rear end right in the middle of a project, and you're going, how do I work around this? And you can spend a half a day on this or 10 minutes. It's, it just depends on how much uh, problem solving experience you've had. So let's go to File and let's go to Place, and I'm going to grab that um, TIFF box template. I'm going to place it. I'm not even going to resize it or anything. I'm just going to see if Illustrator will save. If it gives me an error, we know we have a problem. I did not get an error this time. It did not like that PDF. Don't know why. Now. Click on the scale tool here. 
all this bites. I wish I could just put in a number like I want it to go up to 21 inches and da 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 da. Um, now if we, I am going to have to do a little mathematics unless I want to just click and pull and start dragging. But I need to know uh, how big to make this thing. I'm going to grab the calculator. Uh, and I'm going to figure out how, what's my percentage of enlargement. Because I don't want to sit there and drag that all over the place and get until and, and watch the little pick the little thing next to the cursor until it gets to 21.6163. Um, so what I might have to do is I know that this was 11, um, I believe 11 inches tall. Let me double check. Yep, 11 inches of the height. So, um, but I want it to be 16.739 inches tall. So I'm going to take the finished size, which was 16. Point seven nine three nine finish size divided by the original size which would be 11 divided by 11 so finish size divided by the original size that tells me I need to blow this up 152.6718 percent I just move this decimal point over two. that gives me my percentage of enlargement now for many of you guys are going oh holy crap she's doing math finish size divide it by the original size, and you get your percentage of enlargement or reduction. So when I tell this to scale this at 152.26718, it will go exactly the size I need it. So here's my drawing. I double click on the scale tool, and I am going to type in 152.26718. It was a forever thing, infinite. You want this a uniform scale. This will scale both your horizontal and vertical the same, proportionally, rather. And I'm hitting OK. That should have worked, but it didn't. That should have gone edge to edge. Oh, I know what happened. Uh, this needs to be rotated 90 degrees. I'm not sure why it came in like that. Oh, because when I went into Photoshop, it was a different angle. So let me rotate this 90 degrees. Let's see if it fits. Should have. Oh, no. Okay, I've got this all screwed up because um, oh, this gets complicated. God, I hate it because I'm recording this. Uh, I was measuring this uh, the wrong width. Oh. So I need to have... Mm, mm -mm, let me get out my math again. This really bites the a bullet. Let me tell you what. Let me take this back down to uh, its original. Or you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to sit there and just click and drag and make it bigger and get it back into position. That's probably actually quicker at this point. But there is mathematics that does work. I did use it, but I used the wrong uh, width. I thought the width was a height because this needed to be rotated 90 degrees. Previously, it didn't need it. Now it does. That's really frustrating. Welcome to the world of graphics. Okay, so I'm just going to position it back in. And then I'm going to rotate it that uh, negative 0.6%, I believe it was. Oh, now that I had to do a 90, it's like negative 90.6. It's just, yeah, it gets a little bit more complicated. We're just trying to straighten it up here. There we go. Seems like it should be much simpler than this, doesn't it? All right, so I'm going to nudge it up there. I told you guys this project was a little challenging, huh? So we're trying to get it to align to the grid lines best we can. I'm still a smidge off here and there. Some things are right on it, some things are not. Well, we have to understand too that the template that was drawn in this book was drawn by a human being and they might not have been accurate and it, it wasn't drawn by a computer. So I'm gonna go, I'm like close is good. And I'm gonna save this. Close is good. So just getting it popped in position there. Increase it just a smidge more. Which 
was too much. So it must have been a 99.5. There we go. We're right in there. So just getting this position and straight and the side, right size can be a little challenging. Uh, assuming you have created your template to the right size, when you go to scan it in, um, it should, you shouldn't have to increase or decrease it. You might have to rotate it, but you should not have to increase or decrease your template that you've created if it's a paper template and it's the right size, full size. This is not as big of a problem. All right, so let's move on to the next thing that we need to do here, um, which is... Um, I'm going to lock this guy. I don't want him moving. So you want your layers panel to pop up. And um, on, if, you're if you have your uh, panel out here, some people call it a dock, uh, but there's a big long panel out here. Your layers um, looks like two pieces of paper stacked on top of one another. And if you click on that, it'll fly out. And then I like to just drag the name of it and move it so I can see it. I can always pop it back in there. I like to do that when I'm doing a demonstration. Now what we want to do is we want to select this layer, lock it, and uh, we're not going to draw anything on this layer. This is just there for us to uh, use to build our template on top of. If we turn off the layer, you'll see that little eyeball turns it off and on, so we can turn it off and on as we need to. Uh, but we don't want to draw on this layer. So we're going to create a new layer, and in the Layers panel, the new layer uh, button is right next to the little tiny trash can. It's called the Create New Layer button. It looks like a little dog-eared page. You guys have seen those before in Illustrator, InDesign, and Photoshop. They all have the same thing. And so it created a, a layer called Layer 2. Uh, I'm, I'm going to call this my Cut File. Okay. We'll have a separate layer called um, Score File. Just, it's good to keep those separate. The cut file and score file, great to keep those separate. But right now I'm just going to work on the cut file. I have to remember though later to create a score file. And we want this to be mathematically accurate. So let me uh, move this layers panel back over. I know that I'm working on my cut file layer. I'm going to put that back over, get it out of my way. It's floating down here in the palette panel. And I am going to start figuring out how big this thing is. Now, for me to use this grid effectively, right now I want to go ahead and have my Snap to Grid on. Okay, so I'm going to go to View and scroll down to Snap to Grid. And that makes working on this so much easier than if you don't have Snap to on. Snap 2 makes it accurate, and if you don't have it on, everything is inaccurate and it doesn't line up well, and you're really fighting with it quite a bit. So make sure you turn on Snap 2 Grid, and again, that was under View, and Snap 2 Grid. Now I'm going to get my um, rectangle tool. I really haven't measured this, so it's kind of cool. I kind of don't need to because I've got the template. I got the uh, template here. So I am going to basically start at a corner of one of these and start clicking and dragging in position a box. Now I may at some point need to turn these grids down a little bit because it's very, very noisy. But for demonstration purposes, it's easy to see. But if your grid lines are just too crazy and hard to, you know, just making your eyes hurt, you can always go to Illustrator Preferences, go to Grids and Guides and make them a different color. Um, so if they're really driving your, your head batty, um, Tone back the color a little bit. Not to say that makes it any better. When the grids are in the front too, it also gives you this kind of, um, it looks like visual confusion. Now I do not want this filled with black. I do want it stroke tower with black. So I'm gonna go to my swatches panel, which is a, a little icon. It's got six little squares, two, uh, two rows, six columns, or two rows, three columns, rather, and you click on that, and you have all these colors. Um, now, we don't need all these colors right now, but I'll just fill this with white. And there's a stroke button, which looks like a little square donut in a way. You want to click on that and then apply a black stroke to it. Once you do that, you can see, and I will zoom way in here, 
I want to, in fact, I'm going to fill this with none for a minute. Oops, excuse me. I want to see how accurate I am to uh, the item below it. I eh, feel fairly accurate, so I'm, I'm pretty, pretty happy with that. You can leave that fill of none if it really helps you out. We can fill it with white later if we need to. Now, if I go to my layers panel, I turn off my cut file, and I also turn off my grids. You go to view and hide the, hide the grid. You'll see all I have is a square. Nothing too intense yet. So let's start building this. Now, this measurement here, this item here, I'm going to use this a few times over, at least, uh, oh, I'm going to use it three, four times, it looks like. I'm going to copy and paste this little segment. And I may have to resize it as well. But I'm going to hold down the Alt key, and I'm using the, just the black arrow tool. Hold down the Alt key while this is selected. And then I hold down the Shift key. And what this does is Alt copies and Shift keeps it in the same position horizontally. So I just held down Alt and Shift and copy that over there. If you want to see what I've got, here it is. I've got two of the same uh, item copied. Now we are assuming that this template is accurate, the hand-drawn template. It may not be. Um, and if that's the case, then I may have to make some adjustments, but it looks pretty good so far. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these squares, and I'm going to hold down the Alt and the Shift key again. Alt copies, Shift moves. And I'm aligning this second, well, third square up to this dotted line. And then I'm going to get my selection tool and I'm going to shorten this quite a bit to the point where it matches up to the box that is next to it. Okay, so this is, sometimes I have to zoom in because it might be slightly off. It might be 1 32nd of an inch off and you can't see it when it's zoomed out. That looks perfect when you're zoomed out. But when you zoom, when you zoom in, you'll notice that it might be off. So we have to zoom in quite a bit because these, dev these details are really important. Okay, I'm going to turn back on this layer. Just kind of building shapes and just trying to figure out you know, if this thing's going to work. Now I want to duplicate this little um, flap. I don't, want to I, want, I don't want to duplicate the big flap and shorten it because this might be not the same measurement. And then we know because this box is perfect symmetry, we know that we will just use what we have there, hold down the shift key and the alt key, get him moved over. We know these are in perfect symmetry. They need to be the same width. So I just alt, shift, dragged him over here. And what we have now are two flaps with a fold uh, segment. I'm going to zoom in and make sure they're exactly aligned. Now, these little flaps that are on the edges, what I can do there is I'm going to use what I've already created, which is this little folding segment here. And I'm going to hold down the Alt and the Shift key. I'm going to drag those to the edge. Now, I'm only going to do one of these because I want to do a curve. Now, this is the thing on my videos online. People are going, hey, how do you do these curves? So I'm going to show you how you'll add a curve in here. There's a couple different ways to deal with this, but I am going to do it as easy a way as I can possibly think of. I don't want to work really hard at something and be inaccurate when I can work really much quicker and have pretty good accuracy. And here's what I'm going to do to get these curves. I'm going to get my ellipse tool, which is the circular tool. And I do need to find center on this thing. So if I click on the selection tool, then click on the rectangle, you see that little red dot? That tells me it's center. If I zoom in, that red dot doesn't get any bigger. So let me zoom out just a smidge. Now I believe there's a thing called Smart Guides, and it is turned on right now. I'm under View and Smart Guides. Those work, assuming your um, grid, I believe, is off. But let me see if, what happens. If I float this over here, does it tell me it's on center? Okay, no, it does not. Smart guides will tell me when something's lined up to another thing. In this case, it does not. That's kind of bad. 
So let me go to view and hide guy or hide grid. This is why we should understand shortcuts. Uh, to hide a grid or show the grid, it would be command and apostrophe. And now, this at least in theory, oh, it's not doing it. Let's cancel. Let me deselect this little guy. It should tell me when I'm on center. Ooh, my smart guides aren't working. Fabulous. Let me show grid and see if my smart guides are working in this way. Now, if I float over this, it should tell me when I'm getting ready to, uh, when I hit center on another object. Well, since smart guides aren't working, I'm clicking on the object. That kind of bites. But uh, I know that when I'm using my circular tool, if I click right here on the center of this uh, piece, I can start drawing my circle. Oops, that just moves it. Oh, this is frustrating. I'll get close to center on it. Don't go right on it. It makes it move. i got to figure out what's causing that. I'm going to hold the Alt key to draw the circle from the center out. And if you want a perfect circle, you can hold down the Shift key. So I'm going to make this circle about as big as that box. I'll make it a certain color so you can see what I've done here. There's my circle. It's as large as that little flap. Okay. Now what I do is I just use the arrow key and the shift key. So I'm going to use the shift key and then the arrow key and I'm going to move it over. And it doesn't have to be identical to the flaps that are on the box. It'll be close though. And I have moved it over to the point where it covers this little flap piece. It appeared as if the flap was slightly shorter. So I'm going to pull that in one little point. That's the cool thing about using these grids at 1 32nd of an inch. Just pulled it down just a smidge. And I'm going to take these two shapes. Let me fill this guy with blue so you can see it. Let me turn off the grid for just a moment. So I have this shape here. Turn it off for a moment. And I have the blue shape underneath. Okay. Pathfinder is the most awesome creation in Illustrator because I can grab these two paths. They have to be filled with a color, whether it's white or any other color. It doesn't really matter. It just needs to be filled. It can't be filled with none. Uh, Pathfinder doesn't work with things that are filled with none. So I'm going to bring up my Pathfinder panel and I'm going to go to Window, Pathfinder to bring that up. Here it is. I'm going to tear it off. And you have all these shape modes. One is Crop. That's not what I wanted. One is Minus Front. Oh no, I want Minus Back, but you see what it did? It just got rid of that circle, so let me hit Command Z. What's this one? Is it minus back? It sure is. Now, when you float over these, usually it tells you what they are, but my help's not turned on. But this is minus back. So I just created a perfectly geometric form where I have curved flaps, and all I used was a triangle, or I'm sorry, a rectangle and a circle to do that. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever had geometry class in high school, but this is basically exercising some geometry. I'm going to fill this with none for now so we can see it. Oops, looks like I need to move that in just a smidge. It's not aligned to the other guy. There we go. So I have now, let me turn off my underneath layer. I have now this perfect little flap. It is absolutely mathematically correct, perfect symmetry. It comes in a 32nd of an inch because on the template that I had, it, it did have a little space there so it could close. And it is absolutely perfect symmetrically. And when you guys are out in the real world, if you're doing any packaging design, it is uh, about perfect symmetry. Now, because I don't want to work real hard and do that again, now if you want to practice, you could do it on the other side, but I'm just going to take this little guy here. I'm going to hold the Alt key down and the Shift key, and I'm going to drag him to the other side. And then I'm going to flip him. I could do a 180 degree rotation or I could use the flip, uh, the transform reflect. So here's 180 degree rotation. If I double click on the um, rotation tool, 180 would give me it completely turned around the other way. That's one way of doing it. Or another way some people might choose is going to object, transform, and reflect. And reflecting vertically, um, it will mirror it. So that's two different ways to handle the same problem.
either reflect it or rotate it. Hey, it's actually kind of looking like something, isn't it? And now I should save it. I'll turn back on my layer that has the cut file, and I also need to turn back on my uh, grids. Now let's talk about this crazy shape right here. Gee, that looks really complicated. Well, considering that I can work with circles and rectangles, it's not as complicated as it might seem. So what we're going to do here, because we already have this measure, let me turn off my grids again. I am going to take from my panel here, I'm going to copy and drag and paste it, basically Alt and Shift drag, and then I'll pull him so he is as wide as I need him. I may have to zoom in to make sure that he is actually lining up to everything the way he's supposed to. Again, we want to make sure that Snap2 is on, Snap2 grids. Sorry, my mouse pad just fell on the floor. So I didn't turn off Snap2 grids, so these should be snapping perfectly in there. Hmm, I've got to figure, this is, must be new to the Illustrator where you uh, position something right over the center and it wants to move it. That is, that is new to this version, so I've got to figure out how that, how to change that. It's probably some preference. But I'm going to draw a circle. Basically, these little curves are just part of a circle. So I'm going to draw a circle and I'm going to use um, my grid lines. Know where, that, know where to start it. I'm going to have to zoom way in on this. It looks like I need to start that circle on this grid line right here. <coughs> now, cool thing is, is I can hold down the Alt key, draw from the center out, and hold down the Shift key. Now, this circle doesn't have to be exactly in position. It just needs to be centered right now. It doesn't even have to be the right size yet. Okay, so I am drawing that. I'm going to pull it. Uh, I'm going to make it larger. So if I hold down the Shift key, it will do it not from the center out. Ooh, that's not what I wanted. But if I'll hold down Option and Shift, it will do it from the center out. Oh, that's cool. So I'm making this thing really, really big. And I'm also going to move him down and see about how well it's intersecting this line. Okay, I, I'm looking at this little dotted line as a guide, but that's not always accurate. What I really want, let me turn off my uh, grids and guides and my template. What I really want is this part of the circle to perfectly hit the corner of this square. So I may have to work at that. There we go. And with using 1 32nd of an inch and snapping to the grid, I put it in there, it's perfect. Okay, so I get it about the right size and then I position it so it perfectly intersects. Okay, so I have a perfect intersection. This doesn't do me a whole lot of good just yet. Um, it's not in the right position, but I don't want to mess anything up, so I'm going to leave it right here for now. But I need to get this little segment cut out of this square. I suppose I could pull this down to the point where it perfectly intersects down below. That might work. So I'm holding down the shift key, and I'm using my arrow key, and I'm moving it down. I'm like, oh, that worked out. It's right perfectly intersecting. Um, these lines. One more and it's off. Now I should uh, alt drag him up and hold down the shift key and get him to move up. Now sometimes it's too big and it goes off the pasteboard so I may have to stop. Hold Again I'm going to arrow him up. Let me see how close I'm getting. Not even close so let me get him. There he goes. Perfect intersection. So I'm just looking at, let me color these in. I'm looking at this one this one, and this shape right here. I can grab it. Hmm. There we go, that shape there. These are the three shapes I'm looking at. <coughs> now I'm going to cut away this shape from, the, the yellow shapes from the blue shape, because I need to have it look like what we have here. 
that needs to come in. And it also needs to perfectly align up to everything else. Okay. So in this case, I'm going to hold, click on this object. It has to be filled with white or some other color. It can't be filled with none. I'm click on the circle. And I need to do this one pair of one pair of objects at a time, as far as this whole minus front or minus back thing. If I hold down both the circles and the square and I go, oh, I want to minus this, it goes, I don't know what you want. You're using three objects. It says, please select two overlapping objects. So I have to grab like the yellow circle, the blue rectangle. Oops, wrong one. Let's do minus front in this case. Then I need to bring, uh, now I'm, since he went to the back, I click on the yellow, click on the blue, and this will be a minus back. Oops, let's bring the yellow to the front. Okay, let's just bring the yellow to the front. So we've got object, arrange, bring to front. Now let's try that again. Minus front. Hello. Okay, it is two overlapping objects. We're not sure what's going on here. There we go, finally. It was a matter of order, I guess. So there is an absolutely perfectly managed geometric shape right there. I'm going to fill that with none. And we're building it slowly but surely. This guy's getting built. Now, does it perfectly match up with what's going on here? No, but this should still be just fine. Um, again, this was drawn by hand. Here I'm going by computer. We know the computer is really, really accurate. Turn on the guides again. Now, I typically rob Peter to pay Paul at this point. I've been robbing Peter to pay Paul all along. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this material. I'm going to fill these with yellow so you can see what I'm working with. I'm taking this stuff here. Hide my guides for just a second. And I'm going to duplicate these on top of one another. So if I hold down the Alt and the Shift key and drag them, Make sure they're in exactly the right position. Again, I may have to zoom in to make sure that works. And I'm going to do the same thing below, Alt, Shift, and Drag. This just makes things so much more pleasant to work with when you can just copy stuff that's already there. We don't have to draw every square. We just copy what we have and we recycle it. And I'm turning on my grid, or turning on my layer. I'm going to fill these with none so I can see what's going on. And everything is accurate with the exception of these flaps. So now I just alter one of these flaps and I'm going to copy and paste it and bring it over to the other side. So I'm, I'm just going to um, make this work. Now if I need to get an angle, it looks like I need two angles on here. This is a little bit more uh, work than maybe what you might think. Uh, I have to add an anchor point here to break that corner. I have to add one down here for this corner, and then I just move this guy down here. So I have to add a few things. And to work with this first on the move, I'm going to use this white arrow tool. And if I click on the corner node of this rectangle and start pulling it down, if I hold down the shift key, they'll keep, keep it in line. That pulled that down. But i got to create that little tab right here. So I'm going to use the pen tool. If I click and hold, there's the regular pen tool, but there's an add anchor point tool, and that's what I need to do is add an anchor point. I need to add one uh, for the top. So let's say I just pop one in there. Excuse me, there's one. I'm going to pull that up. Oops, now that's out of line. That's all right. I'm going to add a second anchor point just next to it, and I'm going to pull that down and that should line pretty well. Now this might be a smidge off, but because everything's mathematically accurate, it should be okay when we actually put it together. So now I have just quickly created this little flap. And all I did to do it was copied and pasted something and add a few anchor points. Pathfinder out of the way. Now I'm going to delete this little guy here because I don't need him. I'm going to hold down the Alt and Shift key and bring him over to the other side. And then I'm going to reflect him by going to Object, Transform, and Reflect. And make sure Preview is on so you can see what's going on. Perfect. Hit OK. There we go. That part's done. 
Now, I don't want to have to do that again, so I am just going to copy and paste this section. I grab these. And by the way, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm grabbing this black arrow tool known as the selection tool. I click out in the white area and I drag over it. Everything it comes in contact with, it's contact sensitive, it just grabs it and it, it doesn't group it. It acts like it's grouped, but they're not grouped. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key to copy it and the Shift key to drag it in position. And then I'm going to reflect it. Object, Transform, Reflect. And let me click on the preview, make sure it's the right reflection. Nope, it's not a vertical, it's a horizontal. There we go, that was a horizontal reflection. Zoom in, it looks like everything's riding right on the lines. It's accurate. I can move on. I'm going to fill everything with none right now. Gosh, I'm almost done. This seems almost, this is like, like, wow. You chip away at this stuff and it seems impossible at first, but then you keep moving and you're like, wow, this really isn't as hard as it seemed especially since you're robbing one thing for the other. Now the last thing I have to work on here, oops, what did I do here? Uh, oh, I forgot. Um, oh, I really messed this up, didn't I? This guy's got to go. Maybe I should look at my template every once in a while. He's got to go and he needs to move up. I'm just going to hold down the shift key to do that. I don't necessarily hold down the alt keys. I'm not copying it. I'm just moving it. There we go, they're all aligned. So now the last thing I'm going to be working on is this flap here. The dot, the large dotted line means we're going to apply glue there. Um, it looks like it's got, it's angled off a little bit, so uh, I'll deal with him later. I'm going to deal with the one at the bottom first that doesn't have the angle. This would be this guy down here. He's perfectly straight. Um, now they angle that off so when it's glued you don't see the doubling of the board. So what I'm going to do here is, again, I'm going to steal from a previous uh, thing that I've worked on. So I'm going to steal, uh, I'll just steal these flaps right here. I'm going to hold down Alt and Shift. I'm going to drag them down so they align. Turn on my grid, or turn on my uh, layer one. I'm going to delete the little flaps because I don't need them. Now some people might think, oh, you know what I can do is I can grab this and I can shorten it like this. That doesn't work. That is not what's going on. Okay, so let me hit Command Z. What I am going to do is I'm going to use that minus front or minus back business again. Um, let me get my head around here. There we go. So. Um, I could turn my grids and guides on, but it knows to snap to them, so I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to get my rectangle tool, and I'm going to draw a rectangle right over the part I don't need. Maybe pull it down a smidge. And let me fill these with a color so you can actually see what I'm doing. And what I'm going to do, um, these are all separate shapes, so I have to do this three times. I have to do this minus front thing three times. So I'm going to click on this shape here, which is the first flap. Then I'm holding down the shift key, and I'm clicking on my thing that's going to block it out. I bring up my pathfinder, which I closed a second ago or hid. It's hiding somewhere. Oh, there it is. And I want to minus uh, front that, and it chopped that right off. Now, oops, that thing's gone. Oh, I don't want to draw him again. If, if you notice that that's gone, then let's copy and paste him a few times. So let me just zoom out just a smidge. And I am going to, sh uh, I'm going to alt drag him and shift. I'll move him over a little bit each time. That way I don't keep dragging him on accident. I need three of those. One for this flap, one to cut out this section, and one to cut out that section. So they're all lined up. So now I'm going to do this again. I'm going to grab this foremost rectangle, click on the one behind it, minus the front, stretch this guy out so he covers the middle section, hold down the shift key, grab the middle section, minus the front. He's okay, he's covering this, this guy, so I'm going to click on him, hold down the shift key, and minus front again. There we go, done. Now I have to do the top one. So I'm going to steal from here and bring it up to that top part. So I'm going to hold down the Alt, hold down the Shift, get it up there. Let me turn off my um, template for a moment. Zoom in, make sure this is in the right position, holding down the Shift key while you do that. 
It's in the right position. Perfect. We need to reflect it. So I go to Object, Transform, Reflect. And it is a horizontal reflection. So that was what was chosen. Yay. Hit Preview. It'll tell you what you're going to get. I hit OK. Now let me fill this with none because I don't want anything filled there and I don't want anything filled here because I need to turn this template layer on. I need to see what is it, what is it that I need to do to alter this. So this, uh, this comes in a bit um, on each side. Uh, it looks like mathematically this is a little off on the drawing, but I can make it work. And it also looks like this might be shortened a little bit. Now what I do not do is I do not grab this shape and just shorten it like so because it throws this curve out of proportion. Don't do that. You gotta keep your stuff into proportion. So instead of doing that, what I can do is with the white arrow tool, turn this off for just a moment, I can click and drag over these nodes. It's just grabbing those nodes. Those are solid, these are not. And I can move those nodes all day long and it does nothing to my curve, okay? So I'm just moving multiple nodes. That looks pretty well aligned. Then, I'm going to go with this side over here because it's more uh, pronounced. I need to add an anchor point right about here so I can angle this off. So I'm going to use my selection tool, click on this triangle, a rectangle, grab my add arrow, uh, add anchor point tool rather. I'm going to pop one in, uh, I guess, right about there. Hopefully it made it. Oops. I, if you're not right on it, I'll let you know. Then to move separate anchor points, I grab the wide arrow tool, direct selection tool, and I'm going to select just this anchor point and I'm going to move it in until it looks about right, similar to the template. That looks about right. Zoom out just a smidge. I'm just going to delete this one over here and I'm going to copy the one I just created by holding down the Alt key and the Shift key, getting it over there, and then I will transform it, reflect it. This one will be on the vertical because if you look at the preview it's going upside down do it on the vertical, hit OK, turn that off, and I'm not done yet, but it's getting there. This is just uh, trying to figure out your shapes. So I'm going to save that. Wow, that was not as, it's tedious, yes, uh, <laughs> but it's not as tedious as it seems because you're copy and pasting and just with snap two grids on and you're using grid lights. Everything is absolutely perfect. But you got to zoom in real close to make sure things are on it, that kind of stuff. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a break and then I'll come back. I'll start a new video on how to uh, make the, how to get your dotted lines in here, which are fold lines, uh, separating your fold lines, which is your score file, score layer from your cut layer. We're going we're gonna to do that when we get back. So I'm going to stop the video and I'll have a part two on this. So let me end this video and we'll